Hello and welcome to another Wilderness Tamed video and in this one we're looking at keeping nasties out of your garden. A little bit of biosecurity. Hang around and I'll explain what I'm talking about. what you want to check for when you're uh, using old compost from tubs and troughs and things is that it doesn't have anything nasty in it such as fine weevil grubs uh, or leather jackets so, well you wouldn't find leather jackets in a pot because they're mainly a a turf pest. So your crane flies are going to look for fairly neglected turf to lay their, lay their eggs in. So a bit of grit. So no, no signs of vine weevils in here. Definitely would have come across some by now. There are some old uh, slow release fertiliser granules which a lot of people, I think I've mentioned in a previous video, a lot of people think these are ant's eggs. Would not like to meet the ant that laid an egg that size. The size of a Labrador. Free of any uh, unsavoury bugs, so that's safe to add in to this now, which I will do using the trowel just to try and reduce the amount I uh, spill. <laughs> Slow process, you probably didn't want to watch all of this, so I'll bring you back at the end. Another pot here, again just before I uh, put it into the raised bed with the new plants. I don't want to check that there's anything in here. Oh, there is it would eat the roots, so I can't use the compost from this pot. Dispose of it very carefully or treat it with nematodes because that is a, a vine weevil grub. Actually, I could uh, recycle these. There's always a rock that was around me in this garden. I'm surprised I haven't heard him yet, so I'll pop these in a little tub of some kind, keep them uh, to feed the robin with. It's all recycling, isn't it? So that's quite a haul just in five minutes. I've got that many vine weevil out of that one pot. Uh, so that'll feed the robin quite nicely. The good thing about them is, the majority of them, not like that one or those two, they're bright white, so they really stand out and very easy to find in the, in the compost when you're digging through it. I've only gone down about a trowel's depth, that's all I've found, so I'd, I don't know if there'd be any any deeper, because they really only hang around where the roots of the plants are. And as there was just bedding plants uh, in that pot, I'm not sure there'd be any any deeper down. <laughs> there's one, there's two, straight away. Take in and get those out. Yeah, so there's two, slightly deeper than a trowel's depth, but not much. So it's a bit I could do with spreading this out on. Uh, like a tarpaulin or something and sifting through it but then there's no guarantee as I'm getting rid of the eggs either so what I'm going to do I'm going to put this into um, some of the bags that the grit came in and just uh, get rid of it in fact I might put it in the garden waste bin and at least it will go to a hot composting facility where it gets sterilized and that will kill everything off so that's the spent compost 
all dumped in the garden waste bin which will be removed in another month or so and as I say take my compost facility where it will be uh, composted down. Okay so I'm onto a different pot now and there was a plant in this which I lifted out and have disposed of and it, it was difficult to get out. It had a good root system which suggests that the roots haven't been nibbled away by any oh here we go. Oh no, fertilizer. By any vine weevils. Um, maybe it's just one of those plants that don't like. See there's just no signs of, of any in here at all. Quite often find them around the edges of the pots. So that's a good place to, to dig around. No. So that was uh, biosecurity which is essentially just a posh way of saying keep out of the bad stuff. Um, yeah, weeds and pests, um, fungi, diseases, that kind of thing. You, uh, you know, when you're gardening, um, think about how to reduce the risks of pests, diseases, etc. Coming into your garden and affecting your plants. It's otherwise, you're throwing money away and, and wasting a lot of time. So sifting through that compost before I then transferred it into another place to grow new plants was well worth doing because you could see the results from that one pot was infested with vine weevil and the other two weren't so compost was good to go. Um, uh, always check pots, always when you're buying plants from anywhere always pull them out the pot and see what the root system's like and see if there's any signs of things like vine weevil. Um, what else would be a soil pest? Um, swift moth, larva, um, earwigs can be a problem in plant situation. Um, what was the other one? Oh, wire worms, uh, which look like very small mealworms that you would buy for uh, sort of reptile pets if you had them or, or I think you can, buy, you can buy them as dried mealworms for uh, as bird food as well. Um, so uh, yeah be very very careful when you're buying and don't wait till you get home before you take the plant out and do it at the garden centre or at the nursery. The owners wouldn't mind. I mean if, if anything you're doing them a service because if you do find pests uh, you know grubs and things in a pot immediately return it and tell whoever's working there say you've got a problem you've got vine weevils in whatever it is and they hopefully will act on that and clear those plants off those benches and take them aside and treat them in a quarantine area uh, and bring them back when they're good to go. I remember a garden centre I worked at um, many years ago early 90s um, they brought in of course loads of plants from Holland uh, from the Netherlands and uh, they were all large specimen rhododendrons rhodos and azaleas um, and we had them all laid out on a bench ready for sale and they all started to wilt uh, the rhodos, that is, obviously, the azaleas, the, well, the deciduous ones didn't have any leaves. But the leaves on the rhodos just, all just flopped and we were watering them. I mean, they were under cover, so we thought, well, maybe it's drought, but they were all given a good soaking. And they never perked up, regardless of how much water we gave them. And when we looked at them, when we tapped them out in the pots, here they were infested with vine weevils uh, so we had to call up um, spare van keys from uh, from the Netherlands and say that, that wasn't his name 
<laughs> um, I say you've got to take this stuff back. I mean, I'm surprised it was allowed through customs, to be honest. But then we're talking about the 90s. Nobody cared back in those days, which is why we now have a problem with vine weevil in the UK, where it has previously only been a continental thing. So thanks, customs officers, for your lax uh, biosecurity on the borders. Um, yeah, so, and it, you know, it goes on and on. Um, there's all kinds of things that crept in, um, you know, undesirable pests and diseases uh, crept over the borders through, through the pet trade and through the plant trade, nursery business. Um, what else? Uh, stuff comes in on, oh, timber as well. Um, isn't it the scorpion population on the Plymouth docks that was blamed on timber from the continent? The European scorpions, they're the harmless little sort of light tan yellowy things. It's quite cute. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm sure they came over and originally, I think that's what they think, they came over and created timber. Um, <clears throat> isn't that how Asian hornets have spread, which are now in the UK? Um, and they look particularly vicious. <laughs> but they, apparently they are particularly vicious when you get anywhere near the nests, which are usually quite high up in trees, fortunately. Uh, otherwise, very docile, from what I hear, um, until they find a beehive and they start attacking the bees, uh, a beehive, and then they get quite aggressive as well. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, beekeepers in the UK are now quite concerned about the spread, the northern spread, or the spread north of... Uh, Asian hornets. It's just one thing after another, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, um, the reason I'm recording in the cab of the van is it's uh, still blue and a hoolie out there. Um, it's the tail end of storm, whatever it is. It's just another windy day. Why they started naming them? I don't know. It's supposed to be like America. Right, okay. Um, just storms. Uh, we've had them for generations. Um, yeah. So it's uh, blowing itself out, but it's still a bit loud to be outside trying to record because, you know, wind noise on a microphone's awful. Um, try not to, not to do that if I can. But it's. I mean, it's a sunny day. Is it? You know this. Uh, not much cloud out there. Nice. Anyway, I'll let you get on. I've got to get on. So, well, got to go and visit my mum and have tea and cake. <laughs> uh, so I'll sign off. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Um, if you found that useful, please give me a thumbs up, like button, um, and maybe even subscribe. That would be awesome if you did. Uh, the more the merrier. Uh, it certainly helps the channel go up in the rankings and uh, I get distributed to more people and then more, hopefully they'll subscribe and it just goes on and on and on. There, that was me. YouTube video promotion bit over and done with. Aren't you glad I didn't make a meal out of it and drag it out unnecessarily, you know. Um, certainly in the middle of a video, it's, it's like really annoying. It's like, oh God, you just mentioned it at the beginning or just mentioned it at the end. Don't sort of witter on about it all the time. Smash that like button and, you know, slap the subscribe button or whatever it is other people do to make themselves successful. I sort of turned that into exactly the thing I was talking about not turning it into, didn't I? Uh, fail you in the next one. I'm definitely signing off now. Or am I? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm.